Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is an unscripted off-cuff, and this is something I'm looking to do more often now um, in terms of fast look at things that are happening in the gaming space. And this time it's PSVR 2 now landing on PC, which you can see in front of me. So one of the main things I'm going to discuss straight away is the fact that um, even though there is a PSVR 2 adapter that is predominantly going to be needed across the board, and I'll touch on the reasons why in a moment, you don't need it to play PSVR 2 on your PC now. Um, basically, the PSVR 2 was built with PC in mind. I said this in my review. It's got USB-C, which means it would fit virtually uh, and simply within the virtual link system, which probably was already in that development stage when PSVR 2 started, um, because that was kind of brought to life in 2018, 2019, and then it was kind of killed off 2020, I think it was, when no one could agree on the actual singular format. But there are GPs out there that, that use the virtual link solution. I have one, an RTX 2070. I think beyond that, that everyone stopped using it. I think NVIDIA stopped in the 30 series cards, and AMD stopped uh, 6800 cards. Um, and not even all of them used it. So it wasn't consistent. It's not everywhere, but there are quite a lot of cards that use it. And therefore, my RTX 2070 has got it. My 4090 doesn't have it, which is a bit of a shame. So at this point, I could just... I've, I've tried to order one. They came on sale uh, yesterday as expected. Well, today. I'm recording this today. You're seeing this tomorrow um, in the future. So that means that it's really hard to get one. There isn't many. Very, very limited in terms of supply. Um, I managed to order one, but the delivery time is going to be at least a few days. But I didn't didn't need it. But I will come back and test whether or not some of the things I found here are different with what I will find on the actual adapter itself. But fundamentally, the virtual link is designed for these kind of things. It's designed specifically for HMDs. That's what it's designed for, virtual reality headsets. So you plug it in and away it goes. So I'll take you through the steps of me setting it up, which is exactly the same if you use the adapter. The, all the adapter does is that the USB port goes into the back of your USB 3 port in your PC. Um, but Gen 2, because it's got to be 10 gigabits to match what's happening on the PS5 itself. Um, then that USB-C port goes into the front of the unit, the actual adapter itself. That adapter has a power supply. You've got to plug it in so it powers up. It's a little bit like the PSVR 1 solution on PlayStation 4 and Pro, actually. And then in there, you then have a, a display port which goes out of it and into your chosen display mechanisms. So for me, I'm bypassing all that. I'm plugging my PSVR 2 headset straight into the back of the USB-C port on my RTX 2070, that virtual link connection, and then it all connects up through there. Once you've done that, if you don't have that, then you do need the adapter because you've got no way to connect it back in. Um, it's plug and play. You, you, you'll see it on screen now. It's installing, it's installed the apps, everything connected fine. You couldn't really use it as a game. It wasn't recognized in Steam VR. Um, you do need the PSVR app, though, as I expected. Um, some of that is the driver. I think there is a driver in there that updates it, and you need it to update the headset and the controllers, which it did straight away. Again, as you can see on screen, when I booted everything up, and they were recently updated on the PS5, so this is predominantly updates to support the PC mechanisms, I would assume. So it's got additional elements there, so it works better with PC. And then the next challenge, as I mentioned in my video, is the fact that you do need Bluetooth. If your PC's got Bluetooth, and it's a decent one, so you really need Bluetooth 5.0. Um, I've got the recommended one here, so th this is the... So this is the one you can see on screen, the TP-Link Bluetooth 5.0. This is the main one they recommend from Sony. So uh, I bought this specifically to use on my PC. You can plug it into any USB port, again, USB 3. Uh, it will work USB 2 as well, but I'd definitely go for a faster port if you can, just in case there's any bandwidth issues. And then that is used to sync up the Sense controllers. Uh, and again, as before, they're just Bluetooth devices, so you just connect them in there, they'll then pair. Once they're paired, they'll always pair, and then you just you can track them both in the PSVR app and also in Steam VR as normal. And then you go through the similar setup as you did on the PS5, and I covered in my review. I'm not going to go through that here, but essentially you set it all up. You do the room scan. The room scan is different. Um, you don't get all of that. Um, virtual geometry built from the PS5, all that's gone now. You just kind of look around and it creates a scope around your head and then creates a workable space. Um, the driver also comes as part of that install, but there is an install for Steam VR, or at least an update for Steam VR as well. And then once that's done, you don't need to run the PSVR app, you can just kill it. Um, it doesn't need to run in the background. It will work seamlessly with Steam VR and it tracks all of your controllers, headset, and everything else. And there is slightly more functionality there than I originally expected and probably more to come as I mentioned in my video before and the one the other day which you would have seen my database video. Um, so once all that's done 
following the same setup as the PS5, like I say, you've got this kernel view, it sets up a, a play space. You do, you can configure that directly from Steam VR, but when you do, it pulls open the PSVR app. So you, you've, you've still got to do that part in the PSVR app. And then from that point, you can just kind of browse around and set all your options within the menu system as per any other HMD headset. Works seamlessly, looks really sharp and clean. And there are some nice little benefits here in terms of the PSVR 2 headset that they've boosted. So one thing you can do is super sample the image way above whatever is possible. Obviously, I've got my limited here because my 2070 is not a powerful. It's a shame because when, once I've got it on the 4090, I'll be able to open up and get, you know, stretch its legs a little bit. But here, you know, technically you could go up to 7,000 by 7,000 per eye, which is incredibly sharp and clean. And you can see that in the headset, although you're not, you know, you're only going to be limited by the visual OLED screen inside the headset. If the image underneath, you get super sampling. So it is a lot sharper and crisper. And that's one of the reasons why it's it's far superior to other headsets that I've tested on PC that I've got. And I'll come into that in another video in more depth. I've got the, the Oculus MetaQuest 3, which it does beat. It's definitely better than the MetaQuest 3 in many areas. Not all of them, but, but in image quality it is because the MetaQuest... Um, it compresses the image quite heavily, so that creates a bit of a situation in terms of when you're, you're viewing the headset. But overall, it's it's very similar to the experience you get on PS5, except you have got the option to improve some elements. 120 FPS is recommended. The reason I'm saying that is you get a bit of ghosting because it's not native to the screen. The screen itself in the um, PSVR 2 is 120 hertz. So if you're moving around and looking at things, which I'm trying to show you here, lateral movement again causes a little bit of blurring a little bit of flickering so you have got to fix that by going to 120 that said i couldn't get 120 to work using the usb-c port but that might be limited by the graphics card and nothing to do with the headset I, I guess that's the case because it's a functionality that's built into the headset itself it might also be something to do with me having to play around a little bit more with the settings but when I turned it on, even though it works everywhere else, I can get into the VR space, I can get, once I fire a game up, it doesn't work. So it might be a limitation on some of the games I'm testing. I tested a limited pool in the, in the couple of hours that I had before getting this video up. Um, and yeah, so the 120 hertz is definitely a good benefit in terms of turning it on. That should improve motion clarity. That's another one you should turn off. So the motion clarity option in Steam, turn it off because it can cause flickering and jittering uh, and that can make the image look a little bit worse. That's true of any headset. Um, but once you're in, you can you know do all your virtual movements, bring up your virtual Steam desk, your virtual desktop, watch videos. Everything you did currently with any headset, you can do here with PSVR. It does have the head rumble. It does vibrate, although it doesn't work in games. Um, it tracks your fingers, so you've got a little bit of finger tracking movement. And then I tested it with a collection of games. So Tentacle, which plays, I've got it on PS5 and on PC, plays perfectly, tracks my hands brilliantly. I had no problems in the, in the space that I've got with quite a lot of electrical equipment. It picked up my controllers very well. I didn't have any, um, you know, no more than normal in VR, tracking issues and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, you need the, the view of your hands and the camera because the camera still works in the headset. It's got inside out tracking as before. Everything worked fine. It tracks my fingers. I can control things perfectly. Half-Life Alex, absolutely spot on. Feels as good as it does with using my other headsets. One thing I did find in Half-Life Alex, though, is occasionally it would flick back to showing me the Vive controllers and not showing me the PSVR 2 controllers. So that could be a bit confusing. And obviously using this solution, it makes it a little bit more difficult to capture. You have to, you can choose various methods to capture. At the moment, what I'm doing is outputting the GPU graphic straight to the capture card and I'm using the Steam VR headset functionality where you can display the VR screen. Um, some games bring it up on screen anyway when you're playing so you can just see it normally as a 2D display, a little bit like the social screen that PS5 uses. But you will find a difference there game to game and function to function. Um, I did have a few mapping issues. I had a situation after about two hours of playing where it lost my right hand controller. And no matter what I did, I couldn't get it back. So I had to basically reset the Bluetooth and then that fixed it. I didn't get any controller issues in the game in terms of mapping my hands. But I did have a few moments where it didn't pick it up as well. So it doesn't work as well as it does on PS5 after using it for months and months and years at this point. It it's not quite as consistent. The overall experience in terms of setting it all up is almost as close, but not quite as good. The see-through mode works perfectly, so you can press that button at any time and see through into your office if you're doing any work. You can see where your controllers are, but all of the GUI and the UI that works in terms of the PS5 
doesn't work as well here. So you don't get the glowing contr controls around the ha handset. You can't see virtual versions of them in the game. Um, some games you can see where they are in terms of a, a, a visual presentation of it, but not everywhere. So that makes it harder to locate your devices. I do think there's more functionality that could be added here. And again, this is just an early fast first look at the whole functionality. So don't take this as a gospel review. I'll have a review coming up very soon where I test it with more headsets. But overall, I'm impressed. You know, it works as it, as intended. It still has that warm that that you know the screen door mirror effect that comes up on screen. That is still there. That's persistent within the the focal lens of the screen. Uh, you can improve it by super sampling it. You don't get um, OLED benefits in terms of the HDR functionality as yet, but I'm pretty sure that they'll figure that out and get something working. Um, but overall, I'm very, very impressed with the visual quality, very impressed with the use of the headset, very impressed with how easy it is to set up and get going. And also impressed the fact that it's not having an app running in the background at all times. It's just running it seamlessly within the integration of Steam VR. So again, brings me back to my point where um, they've, they've got this strategic partnership between the two. And now Steam VR has obviously been working with Sony at some point to get this fully configured into their driver suite and working as expected. Like I say, some of it is the driver that's come with the PSVR app, but you do get updates to both applications and make sure that you follow all the guides, do all the updates first and just step through all the setting up the environment. Because if you don't do any of those things, you can have a terrible experience, which is true of all VR um, headsets. So just take the time to set things up properly. And then you too can be playing Half-Life Alex in PSVR 2. Um, your thoughts and feedback. Do you have a PSVR 2 headset? Are you looking to use it on PC? Have you got a card like a 2080 or a 2070 or a uh, 2080 Ti? Those would be good cards. I think the best quality cards you could get other than that, something like a 6900 XTX. If you could get it, that's also got you. That's got Virtual Link, I believe. And Virtual Link is this standard headset solution, as I mentioned, that basically was designed around using USB 3. It gives you far better power delivery to the headset as requirements. You don't need a separate power source. It means that the PSVR 2 keeps charged at all times. And it also means that it gives you the widest bandwidth possible and it's direct from the GPU. So for me, it was perfect. I, I always thought Virtual Link was a perfect solution. So I was dead surprised when it kind of had such a short lifespan. And all the people that got together, including NVIDIA, AMD, um, I think Sony or Intel and, Val and Valve, I think. Yeah, Valve, definitely. All of them were involved. And then within two or three years, it was it was canned. So a bit of a shame that they couldn't get to a standard there. And that's that's the constant problem, I think, in technology. You know, HDMI has been probably the most standard functionality we've had for such a long period of time. It's been nice prior to that. Um, even then, we had arguments. You had SCART, you had Composite, you had Component. So it, even when that digital or analog, it's never been a simple solution. So that's a shame. Uh, but like I say, I'll have to come back and test when I get the actual adapter to see if that improves or changes some of the tracking issues that I had in the game itself. It shouldn't because most of those issues did come from the controllers, but I did have a few performance hiccups that I've never had with my Vive headset. Um, so that's a bit of a weird one. Uh, what I mean by that is the game kind of started to slow down for a few seconds and I had some performance hiccups in Half-Life Alex, which also I could visibly see in the headset. I've not noticed those before, but again, it is early days. Some of it is the fact that I'm using the 2070, which is not my preferred um, G PC or GPU for VR gaming. I would recommend something more powerful than that. Um, you're not going to get anywhere close to achieving what the PS5 does there. So if you are looking to get that quality or better, then yeah, you are going to need that adapter or you're going to need a, a graphics card that supports it. So like I say, a 6900 XTX, I think is the highest spec card that supports virtual link. But again, that's top of my head. If anyone knows differently, put the comments down below. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. It was fast, it was furious, but it was VR related. And I shall be back with far, far more virtual reality related content and other stuff that I'm working on as well. So remember, I am self-funded. I am independent. I am doing all this on the side in terms of my full-time job. I am a full-time developer, stroke delivery management architect. So that's what I do as a living. So all the things I do here is a secondary thing to my full-time role, including the stuff I do over on IGN. So if you can help, please share this video. That's really important. Please like, please comment, and hopefully get my numbers up so I can do even more work. And if you can, you can support me over on Patreon as well. But for that's it for today's video. If you have any thoughts and feedback, your views on PSVR and PC VR overall, leave the comments down below and I'll catch you very soon 
on the next one. <laughs> Alex, everything cut out for a second. I lost the headset video feed. Can you see my drone? Is it okay? Sure, sure.